Today I wanted to make a quick uh, tip and trick video about uh, Design X. And recently we had a question about how to probe scan inside of Design X. Um, so many of you know that if you have a portable CMM with a scanner on it, you can scan with a laser, um, but many times in certain projects, um, it's nice to be able to probe scan so or scrub the surface with a probe and scan that. And the reason why that's super beneficial is the ability to scan occluded areas. So with a laser, you have to see it in order to scan it, right? And that's the idea is it's line of sight. Um, but with a probe, what's nice is you can stick it down inside of a, maybe an intake manifold and scrub the surface of a part and capture data that I can't even see. Um, and there's even custom probes out there that you can mount to the end of these different CMMs and probe that surface. And then we can connect those points together into a surface and uh, use that data for reverse engineering or inspection. Um, so in order to do that, um, what you need to do is come over to the live capture tab here inside of Design X, And in the settings, you can go over to the probe tab and you can change it over to probe scan and under probe scan you can do two different methods you can do it based on time intervals or distance um, so when i grab the probe and i start scrubbing the surface back and forth the time um, it's just going to co uh, collect a point every certain amount of milliseconds and then distance is every certain amount of distance that the probe moves it will collect the data um, so you can do it either or. Today I'll just do it based on distance and then I'll hit apply and OK to get out of it. Um, now in order to capture that data, I come over to live capture here. And for many, the default will be on the laser setting, right? Um, but what we're going to do is toggle over to the probe setting here. Now once that's toggled over, I can hold the main probing button on your device. So in this instance, it's the green button. And as I hold that button and move the probe, it will scan. So I'm just gonna probe the top surface of our demo part that we use. And you'll notice the reason why we have those settings for distance in milliseconds is you want to try to create a nice dense point cloud because our algorithms when we capture the data are usually tuned for high density laser data. Um, so if you can capture nice high density data like evenly spaced as possible, that helps out. That's just the idea. Yes, we can, we can triangulate almost any point cloud and adjust the settings. But if you want to just have a nice, easy project where you're capturing data here, the best thing to do is just probe a lot of points or at least a nice evenly spaced point cloud. And that'll just make it a little easier to process, that's all. You see on the left-hand side, I accidentally slipped off the side. So those points will probably just get filtered right out because I have one string of points there. So now that I exit out of it, get out of the plug-in, you'll see that I have, I'll just cancel past the scan processes or mesh build a wizard here. Um, I'll have a point cloud over there on the left hand side. And you see that spot where I slipped off the edge. Um, so if I wanted to delete that, it's really easy to do. Um, I can come over to my lasso and I'll change to select through and just delete those points. So you see, there is my point cloud. Now, just to demonstrate, these are compensation off points. So the probe tip has a diameter to it. Now, if I come back into live capture, turn on the laser and I'll probe that same surface. And we'll get out of the plug-in there. 
and then I'll rotate the part, you can see that they're hovering above the surface because that's the probe radius. <clears throat> so now in order to use these points, the best thing to do is come over, I'll just hide the scan there, come over to my points menu and come into triangulate. Now usually with when I triangulate and mesh a point cloud, I start out with 3D triangulation, that's kind of my go-to. Um, and I'll turn off this remove original data so it won't throw away my point cloud. And I'll just leave the settings as is, and you see it creates a pretty good mesh. Um, I could also, there's all these different algorithms in here that are really nice. Because I probed it from one direction, I can actually come into triangulate and go to 2D triangulation from current viewing direction. And I could even say, let's triangulate it from this direction. And yeah, that one wasn't even that much better. Um, but you can uh, you can tweak the settings um, to mesh it in a variety of different ways here. Um, so if I go from current viewing direction, and let me just bump that up to back to five where it was. There, that's a really good uh, surface mesh there. But you can, the point is that we have a bunch of algorithms that you can tweak and use. And since this data isn't your typical data that you're dealing with, um, it's nice to be able to have those. Now that if I, now I turn on the original scan data here, the laser scan data, I can actually come over to uh, polygons here and then just go ahead and do an offset. Um, so if I select the uh, data set that I want to work with, and let's do three is what it is, because it's a six millimeter probe, reverse it. So you can see my preview there. And I can say, uh, go ahead and okay. So now my probe data, if I hide and show my laser data, you'll see it overlapping. So now we have data that matches up with the surface of that part. You see how you can kind of see it bisecting there. If I come over and select that probe data, I can even come over to the properties and change the color and see the two different as different colored meshes. So that is a little preview of or tip and trick uh, demonstration of how to probe scan inside of DesignX.